All right, part six. What a journey this has been. Definitely a lot of content. Hopefully now by the end of this tutorial, you feel really confident about reading a 10K, navigating through a 10K, maybe understanding more about everything that's inside the 10K without having to take some MBA accounting class or something like that. So this last video, I'm gonna try to keep it short. I know the last time I said that it went really long, but this one for, for real, I'm gonna keep short. Uh, it's gonna be pretty simple. It's gonna be every tool that I know uh, that I'm currently using up to this point that has to do with financial statements. So there are gonna be some shortcut tools on here. Uh, they are not a substitute for going inside and actually using the 10K, but they can give you like a quick overview and then you can kind of uh, like narrow stuff down and then figure out instead of having to shift through like, you know, 110Ks, then maybe you can like Finviz. I, I've talked about that one before, but then there's also another one called ADVFN. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, so, you know, let's say you've used Finviz and now you've gotten... You've gotten your stock selection to be down to, I don't know, let's say 10 and you want to, you don't want to go through 10, 10Ks, but maybe you want to go through like three or four. Then you can use ADVFN and quickly look at data in order to navigate quicker than using like SEC website. So you know about Finviz if you follow me at all. I have a whole video on Finviz shows you how to use it. Basically, it's how you filter a uh, group of stocks using some parameters and that will give you uh, an idealist. So let's just say uh, we want to check out SCB. So what we would do, you know, we got our short list from Finviz. Not going to go over that. You would go here, ADVFN. You would go to historical. Not historical. Where's financial? That's where we need to be at. Let me log in first. Uh, you do have to have an account, but it is free. So... I don't know. Okay. That was weird. I don't know if they, like, moved it. They must have moved it. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, uh, you can see, you know, in any 10K, you might only have at most three years of data and then they show two years of data for the balance sheet. But here you've got five years displayed real nice. And so you can do, you know, especially if you're looking at uh, trying to get like five year growth or, or things of that nature, then you can quickly go through and you know, it's a little bit simplified too. You don't have to scroll as much if you want to go, you know, here's income statement, here's balance sheet. So a little bit more convenient, a little bit quicker if you're, transferring um, metrics from one place to the other. The second place I will show you, which I've been using more and more lately, quickfs.net. Uh, this one I have account for as well. Basically, um, similar kind of idea to ADVFN, but let's say I want to do SCB. What you get, is, which is nice, is now we have 10 years instead of five. So, um, you know, obviously they have everything here. The way this guy kind of organized it, he has income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Um, so, again, not a substitute for actually doing, actually digging through the 10K, but something that you can pull 10K data from and uh, quickly look. So I like to use this for like like this nine-year CAGR comp compounded annual growth rate. That's nice to know for revenue. Uh, and then EPS too. So that gives me a general sense that, okay, um, the past nine years they've been growing earnings about 6.7% a year. And then of course you want to look at earnings and, and compare that to EPS. And we talked about that in the first video of this series. So uh, that's really cool. One other one that comes to mind, um, valueinvestor.org. I actually met these guys when I went to the Berkshire Hathaway um, 
annual meeting this past was it March or April? I can't remember now. Oh no, I think it was May. <laughs> I went there in May. Um, so they have a cool, I don't think their screener works yet, but they have a cool kind of thing. I used this when I was, so we're going like five year, 10 year. And now this is like everything, which is really cool. So they show, um, look at that. I mean, you can look at everything from 96. I think some of them go to 93 or 94. I can't remember, but like I was trying to find what years companies had negative earnings for one of the research things I was doing. And this tool just made it so easy for me because I could just look at a glance and I don't even have to like scroll through. Like in this one, I would have to scroll through and change the year. Whereas with valueinvestor.org, I could just do this right away. Now, uh, valueinvestor.org is a work in progress. I know um, they're literally just starting out. So some of their stuff's also broken. Like I noticed their... Their 10 year share growth was like all messed up. But anyway, uh, it's cool for if you want to do a, all of the financials from basically the way the SEC works is they only have data online up to like 93 or 94, maybe 92. But I think the filings earliest available are like 93 or 94. Um, so anything that you kind of use as a tool to source data from from the SEC, they're they're pretty much just gonna go back to there, and that's it. Uh, the only other one that I can think of that you can use to look at, like, if you want to really go back, and I I love doing stuff like this when I'm doing research. Um, so let's say you wanted to look at net earnings from 1985, then Wolfram. Alpha is one of those that will actually have that. And so they actually have, you can see, uh, they're able to search that for you. Um, so I don't know where they source from, but most everything else is only going to be up to like 92, 93, 94. See, look, book value. I'm sure they have total assets too, if we want to. So you can... <laughs> It's like an archive thing. You you can go back. It'll obviously take you a long time, but you can kind of do it that way. And I believe um, the farthest back I've been able to go on Wolfram was, I thought it was 1982 or 1972, one of those. So, you know, an extra 10 years where you can kind of go back a little bit farther and, you know, do some research there. Because I think learning from history is so valuable if you want to, really find thing principles that are timeless stuff that works and all those sorts of things. I think history can be immensely valuable for that. Now, before I move on from these tools, I will say that uh, one other feature of ADVFN, which I mentioned before is if you're using trailing stops, you can use, they have an alerts uh, tab and you can get share price alerts uh, and basically get emails whenever share price hits a certain point. So, uh, again, you have to make a free account to do that, but it's free. Just give them your email, and that's that. So showed you Finviz. That's the stock screener I use. I showed you some of these financial tool secrets. Not secrets, but uh, shortcuts. And I will show you one last tool. And this is a little bit of a secret because I very rarely show myself using the val my own value chart indicator tool on my YouTube videos. If you know this, I tend to stay away from that. There's like one other video. It's like an Easter egg. I'm not going to tell you where it's at, but I have one other video where I show myself actually filling out uh, a VTI spreadsheet. So this is the other tool that I use when it comes to financial statements. And this is how I determine personally if I'm doing a strong buy or a strong sell. Um, so, you know, I always mention about all the spreadsheet tools that I use, right? Um, actually I want to do Aetna just because they are on top of mind for me. I always use, um, spreadsheet tools or I create spreadsheets and I, I put them on that Google drive for, uh, that Google drive folder for people who are subscribed as daily email subscribers but this spreadsheet the vti sp 
spreadsheet will not be on there. So don't complain or ask me about it. Uh, and that's because it's one of the products that I offer. So if you want more interest, uh, more information about that, you just go to valuecharpindicator.com. But I'm going to show you how I use a financial statement and the 10K in order to uh, make a bunch of calculations automatically and then start to make determinations for sure understand and know if something's like a value trap or something to stay away from. And then um, if something is a strong buy on here, then I take it the next step and I say, okay, well now it's past this kind of checklist for me. And now I want to look at other qualitative measures. measures. I want to look at different growth metrics. Um, but the value trap indicator value trap indicator tool is something that's very useful to tell me that the valuations are all okay the business model is strong and um things will probably turn out like i'll probably have great gains and i probably will limit my losses with a um stock that has a strong buy for the vti so quarterly dividend And by the way, um, just so you guys know, as a disclaimer, if you are watching this like today or in May of 2018, Aetna is about to be bought by CBS. Just so you know. And this is not a recommendation to buy or sell a stock, blah, 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 blah. Figure you guys watch me do this might help you out and show you, you know, what, what, um, what a good financial statement tool kind of looks like. So, uh, hopefully you've been watching the series. If, if this stuff's confusing to you, go back and watch it all it's a lot of content but very useful and so you know as you can see i am pulling the data from the series that that we had right so the sales the earnings eps the net cash remember i had a whole segment on that I don't remember where we found the dividend. Because I wanted it per year. So that's helpful. Um, this stuff I don't believe is consolidated because it's in the selective financial data. But I'm not worried about them making a mistake on dividends. I really that's even if they did like that's such a small thing in the overall big picture but i mean come on like how can you screw that up right all right um now we just need shares outstanding there you go weighted average shares used to calculate computed EPS all right and the way my tool works here is I want five years of earnings data and so what that means for me is I always need to go back and I need to look at not only this recent 10k but one two years prior that way I can figure out like what happened in 2014 or 2013 and there's an example of what we were talking about in video two, where the financial data is actually in EX13 and not in the, the usual spot. But I'm gonna finish this, and then what it's gonna tell me, uh, it's gonna give me some other stuff. So I have a bunch of metrics. I'll, I'll briefly kind of show you some of them, what they are. 
Um, a lot of calculations that happen behind the scenes with this tool. But I obviously love it and it helps me. It saves me so much time every month because then I can worry about stuff like qualitative measures, um, growth. I don't have to worry about value valuation too much. So that's going to give us enough. I don't want to fill out the whole thing um, just because I know your time is precious just like mine is. So the last thing I just need to do is um, get the share price. So 178.54. So you can see uh, I have earnings growth for the past three years. Um, so how it went from here to here, here to here, here to there. Um, I've got payout ratios on the dividends. I've got price to book, price to earnings, price to cash, dividend yield. All of that's automatically calculated when I put this stuff in from the 10K. And I also have like price to sales and debt to equity. And so what I'm getting for Aetna right now is 368.01. So the way my value chart indicator works is anything under... 250 for the VTI would be a strong buy. So this is one of those kind of monitor uh, close to a strong buy, but not quite either conservatively leveraged enough or uh, valuation wise, it's a bit pricey. And you can see that just from a cursory look, like a PE of 31, that's pretty high. PB of 3.8, that's on the high range. And the debt to equity of 2.48, that's high as well. I, I like to keep it, I mean, at most, maybe two and a quarter. So when, once you get past two and a quarter, you're really pushing it with debt to equity. So that's going to wrap it up. And not even just for today, but for the series. So I hope you enjoyed it. I will definitely have more videos coming out. Be ready. There's a torrent of them coming. <laughs> and... uh this Saturday series was fun, but I'm um, kind of excited to get my weekends back. So talk to you later. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the how to analyze the stock valuations playlist, which gives you more color on what we talked about today. And remember, stop working for money. Put money to work for you. I will talk to you next time.